All right. Now, a massive sinkhole has torn through a Centurion neighborhood, leaving residents isolated and even frustrated. This is the second one to form on the same street within a year, now, while the first has still not even been fixed. The city of Tuane has confirmed 63 sinkholes across the metro. We're now joined by Manager for Infrastructure at the Council for Geoscience, Nomvelo Mkize, to help us understand these sinkholes a little bit better. Nomvelo, thank you so much for the time. Appreciate it. How do sinkholes actually develop? And how do you know the difference between a sinkhole and a pothole? Good morning. Okay. Good morning, Arabile, and good morning to your viewers. So, so starting with the development of sinkholes. So this is a process that takes a very long time. So it essentially starts with a dissolution of the dolomite rock underground, which is caused by acidic water. So what happens is that um, this process takes a long time. It happens unnoticed on the ground. And then all of a sudden, uh, one day, the ground collapses. So there's um, essentially two factors that can uh, result in the sinkhole formation. So it can happen through the groundwater dewatering. So that's where the groundwater level goes down and then it results in the exposure of cavities underground. And it can also happen whereby there is a seepage of water from surface uh, resulting in the washing away of um, uh, this material, which is weak, resulting also in the formation of cavities and then later a sinkhole. So that's basically how they occur. And a majority of the sinkholes result from human activities where you find a leaking pipe over time. Uh, resulting in this water seeping through the ground or whereby you have a situation of um, storm water which is not properly channeled mm. so becoming stagnant and resulting in the water seeping onto the ground so basically that's how these sinkholes okay so um, when it comes to the potholes potholes are quite different potholes is whereby um on the road, maybe um, there's water that would have ponded for some time, and then it results in eating away um, um, the material that is used uh, to construct the road. So potholes are much shallower than sinkholes. Sinkholes would be quite deep, but they vary in size as well. Yeah, I can promise you there's some potholes that certainly feel like they look like sinkholes, though. Um, so ultimately, they can happen anywhere. Is that is that correct? Um, the sinkholes, the sinkhole. not necessarily. They they don't happen anywhere. Um, you've got to have dolomite bedrock or limestone, which are rocks uh, that would be uh, soluble when they are when they react with acidic water. So does that mean then, if if they don't happen just everywhere? You'd have to have this dolomite. You'll have to kind of understand the foreground. Have we not mapped the country sufficiently to understand exactly where this could possibly happen and then put in measures that would prevent this sort of thing from happening? Is that possible? Um, yes, yes, that's correct. We have a full understanding of where you would essentially find dolomite. I mean, the country is mapped uh, extensively. So we do know the areas that could be affected, that are affected by dolomite bedrock, and therefore areas that could potentially have this hazard of sinkhole formation. But unfortunately, to ascertain that indeed a sinkhole will occur in this area, you need other studies, studies like drilling, geophysics, where you'd be able to scan the ground to know that in this area, there's cavities underground, mm. or there is low density material that can be easily washed away by this water seeping through, or the drawdown of groundwater, mm. which is a which can be quite expensive in terms of doing these investigations. So, how long does it take to fix a a a a sinkhole, and and is it possible to actually fix one for good? Um, starting with your last question, yes, it's possible to fix one uh, for good, depending on um, doing the process properly and conducting the appropriate investigations and therefore the rehabilitation 
done accordingly. Um, but in terms of how long it takes to fix a sinkhole, it varies because these sinkholes are different in sizes to begin with. The depth is also different. Mm. Um, so a bigger sinkhole would require more resources to fix and therefore would um, take longer, essentially. And there's also investigations that must happen in order to decide on the rehabilitation method to use to fix the sinkhole itself. And it also depends on the funding, the availability of funding um, and where the sinkhole it actually happened. I mean, take a sinkhole that happens on a busy road. Um, yeah, that would affect uh, a lot of things and therefore the process might be, might, might be quicker because of the agency of it. So mm -hmm. it varies essentially. What about residents or, or people who want to check if their area or areas close by are susceptible to uh, being a or having a sinkhole near them? Can, can people check if there's an area uh, near them that is like that and then what it is that they can do to fix it and the cost involved, etc.? Yes, it is possible. But essentially the process starts with the investigation proper investigations must be conducted in order to uh, determine the susceptibility of the sinkhole occurring. So there has to be dolomite stability investigations that take place. And that will give you um, whether the area is susceptible to the sinkhole occurring or not. But if one wants to check if a sinkhole has happened um, in a particular area, there is a way of also checking that um, here at Council for Geoscience as um, a custodian of geoscientific data, we have a database of sinkholes that um, have occurred or recorded in the past. So our stakeholders can easily come to CGS and, and inquire to see if there was ever a sinkhole in that area. Mm. Um what are the best dolomite risk management and mitigation measures at play here? And, and one also asks, because I, I think back in 2018, Tulas Nguesi, who was then the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, actually put in place the dolomite risk management unit and established that in 2018. Has that even been functional and has that helped at all? Um, okay, I would not have the details of that structure that was formed, but when it comes to managing um, areas that are underlain by dolomite and mitigating the risk, um, we have what we call dolomite risk management strategies or plans that must be in place mm. because um, this risk is imminent. It just depends on how you mitigate it because there are measures in place that needs to be put in place to make sure that uh, a sinkhole does not occur. So it is upon the municipalities or the owners of, um, of the land to ensure that they employ these dolomite risk management strategies to mitigate against this risk. Nomvelo, it's a very interesting topic and one that I think uh, a lot of residents, a lot of people will pr pretty much be looking out for. So I, I suppose it really is the call to those municipalities to be on the lookout and for residents then to continue to call out and say that this has happened in their area, call out for potholes, call out for these sinkholes, and hopefully a lot more is done to fix it. Manager for Infrastructure at the Council for Geoscience, Nomvelo Mkize, thank you so much for helping us uh, understand that a little bit better.